Kisponsored fun, thecubicle.com. Sponsored by thecubicle.com. A lot of people recommend to critique your own solves in order to improve. And a lot of the times we notice flaws in our solves that are very generic. For example, to improve look ahead and the flow of your solve, having faster TPS, being more efficient as in having less move count solutions and solves. Wow, 30 moves. And the list goes on. And a lot of us also know some strategies and or techniques to improve these areas in our solves. For example, slow untimed solves for look ahead, learning and implementing F2L algs with a less move count for more efficiency, drilling algorithms for faster TPS, and perhaps even learning some ZBLLs for a faster last layer. More than 200 algs? I quit before even starting. But which one of these is most important and in which one should you focus on most for the maximum improvement possible? So today we will have an epic improvement battle. That name makes a lot of sense, right? Which one is most important and which one should you focus on most for maximum improvement? Let's get started. Starting off with look ahead, it is very important to say the least. You can literally ask any Huber the importance of look ahead, and I'm sure they will agree that it is very important. But Tanish, what is look ahead? Oh yes, so as the name suggests, you look ahead. Get it? Obviously not. Well, this quote should make it clearer. Don't look at what you're solving. Your password is incorrect. Look at what you're going to solve. For example, rather than just staring at your fingers solving this F2L pair, critically observe the cube to see how the moves you're doing to solve this F2L pair are going to affect the pieces of your next pair. So right when you finish that F2L pair, you know exactly where and what the second pair is so you don't have to pause and thus your time will be faster because the pausing time will be eliminated. Do you get it now? Oh, I get it now. And yeah, so this goes for everything. F12 to last layer, cross to F12, you name it. Take a look at these two solves. See a difference? I think so. On the solve from the right, you can see that literally after every step there is a pause, but on the solve on the left, there is literally no pauses, or if there are pauses, they are very very minimal between each step. So because of the pauses on the solve on the right, the flow is clearly hindered, while the flow is a lot better on the solve on the left. When one pauses a lot during solves, these pauses really add up, which one might not notice while solving. I don't notice anything. And the better your look ahead is, the less you have to pause, or the less time you have to pause for, if you have to pause, and thus the better your flow, the better your look ahead, and the less the time, because less pauses or a, or a smaller time of pauses will add up in your final time, thus the faster your final time. Yes! So fast! So fast! This is the main understanding you should take away from this section, and this proves the importance of the look ahead. But is look ahead enough? Can you be world class with minimal to no pauses consistently in speed solves? Uh, yes. But efficiency and less move count certainly wouldn't hurt, would they? So let's look at this F2L pair. This is the most efficient way of solving this F2L pair, at least from this angle. But what if someone solved it in this way? That is very inefficient. If you solved it this way already, don't feel bad or anything, at least you know a better way to solve that pair now. Anyways, you can normally tell how efficient the solution is by timing the solution. Sheesh! That was fast. As you can see from this example, the time difference would be pretty considerable. But even for things that are not that different, this technique should work. And this also works for other things such as different PLL algorithms or different cross solutions, etc. But knowing multiple solutions to a case is definitely worth it. For example, sometimes you can force a better edge orientation for last layer by doing one algorithm, not the other. Your password is incorrect. And learning algorithms that are angle specific is a very good technique so you don't have to rotate. No! No! 
No, 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 I quit. You can do this by just chilling on your couch and playing around with the cube, or you can search the internet and learn more solutions. And choosing a faster solution depending on the case will obviously make you faster. Using solutions that are consistently efficient and consistently optimal for the case will obviously make you faster because you won't have to rotate, you can force a better case in the future, or it just has a less move count. Bringing me to my next point, another thing efficiency brings to the table is lower move counts. At least this is the general theory. And obviously, lower move counts generally mean faster times if, they're, if they do not hinder look ahead or execution because you have to do less moves to solve a cube, so obviously you can do it faster than if you were to do more turns. And we can even prove this mathematically. The turns per second formula is TPS equals move count divided by time, thus time equals move count divided by TPS. So the lower the move count, the lower the quotient of move count in TPS, and thus the lower the time, and thus the faster the time. All this goes to show the importance of efficiency in your speed solves. Now, let's move on to the next section of this video. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Yes, this is another day. And yes, some of my videos take really long to make. So that's why if you like this content, be sure to support me by liking this video, subscribing, and pressing the notification bell for more content like this. Also, whenever you order from thecubicle.com, be sure to use the discount code 10HD for not only a 5% discount, but also for a free critique or shout out. You guys know it too. Anyways, TPS, short form for turns per second. Time to solve, note the time down, Scramble the cube with the same scramble again, count the number of moves in your solution, and divide the number of moves by the time, and voila, you have the TPS for your solve. There's also a really precise thing called frame counting, but we really don't need to get into that for this video. Anyways, TPS is important for obvious reasons. It helps you turn faster. Sometimes a lot faster. And turning faster obviously means faster times, because as I said earlier, TPS equals move count divided by time, thus time equals move count divided by TPS, and this time the higher the TPS is, the lower the quotient of move count and TPS, and thus the lower the time, meaning the faster the time. Also, it's just really common sense, because if you turn faster, you solve faster. Right? Uh, no. Nah, nah, nah. Not at all, actually. You are what? What are you talking about? Guys, guys, stop. Stop. I'm gonna explain. You might think I'm dumb for saying that, but I can assure you that if you keep watching this video to the end, you're gonna get it. I just watched this video to the end and I get it now. Watch this video to the end, kids. But I leave this section of the video as it is. TPS can positively impact your times, but it can also negatively impact your times. But Tanish, that's good and all. You have discussed each one of these things, but which one is most important for maximum improvement? I'm literally trash at all of these areas. I cannot turn fast, my efficiency is subpar, and my look ahead is a joke. Which one of these areas should I start improving first? <sighs> Sorry, dude. What? What do you mean? Well, um... I clickbaited. Let me explain. None of these are really more important than one another. They're all important. You need to have a balance. You clickbaited us? You wasted so much of our- No, 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 no. I did not waste anyone's time. I, I, I don't understand. Bro, stay quiet. I didn't finish. Take a look at one of my solves. <laughs> The turning speed is pretty nice, the look ahead is pretty good, but the efficiency is lacking. There are tons of rotations, and the selection of which F2L pair to do could be improved. And here, if I had better efficiency, I would likely be much faster, even world class, because I have really good TPS, look ahead, and efficiency. Now let's take a look at a solve from Kunal Oak.
Ranger's efficiency is on the money, as one can clearly see. Rotations are minimum, selection is good, and solutions are great. His look ahead is also really, really good, though his turning isn't very fast, which literally costs him a second and a half on average. I really don't fact check that number, I just made that up, but... Y you get what I mean, okay? Does if he had a turning speed like Matty Hiroto Inaba and turned so that did not hinder his look ahead, execution, or efficiency, he would literally be god tier. He is still god tier, but you know. Also, the other day I was critiquing an up and coming speed cuber, Brenton Dunnigan, and I noticed he had pretty good efficiency and turning, but his look ahead was lacking. He can look ahead in inspection to sometimes one or even two pairs in inspection, which is awesome. Thus, the first part of his solve up to the second pair is normally really good, but then the very high turning speed because he knows exactly what to do from the start of the solve till the first pair compromises for look ahead. And after the second pair, he literally doesn't know what to do and has pauses from there on out. As I said in the look ahead section, he was just staring at his fingers, turning the cube really fast till the second pair. Because while solving up to the second pair, he wasn't looking ahead to what would happen after the second pair. And this increases his final time. So this shows that if I had great efficiency, then I'll turn faster while not compromising for execution, look ahead, or efficiency. And Brendan is able to slow down his turning so his look ahead isn't compromised after the first or second pair because turning a little slower makes it easier to look ahead what will happen in the next steps all of us would literally be world class probably <laughs> and if you master all three areas in your solve and can execute it really well you get people as fast as max asher maddie and do remember that if you are really good at all three of these areas, you should also be able to execute everything in your solve really good, which is something I didn't talk about, but execution is as important as the solution. So guys, this shows why all of these areas are extremely important in your speed solves, and it isn't enough to be world-class to be good at one or even two of these areas, because the remaining one or two will be compromised, and thus you won't be as fast. That is so amazing. That literally changed my cubing life. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And whenever you order from thecubicle.com, use code TANISHD for not only a 5% discount. Come on, guys. But also, also, also a free, free, free critique or shout, shout, out. shout out. That's true. Use my code. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you learned something. Till next time, bye.